welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jumoke. Nice to meet you. On this channel, we talk about thin, fine, natural hair and faith. So if any of those interest you, make sure to like, to subscribe, to share. Come on, hit that bell so you can continue to get more amazing content, baby. Come on. So guys, today I wanted to give you a quick word of exhortation. If some of y'all are not that saved or haven't been saved for that long, it just means a word of encouragement. <laughs> and the word I have for you all today is that God calls you in your mess. All right, let's just get real into it. Um, this sparked my interest the other day that a preacher was talking about how God called Paul on his way to Damascus to go, was on his way to I hope it was, but he was on his way to go and persecute some more Christians. And that is where God called him. I think sometimes we, expect God to give us a calling or a vision or something for our life or, or speak something over our life when we're at our, our highest peak. And I know some people that you're probably watching this, God has probably told you to do this or to do this and a lot of people, you'll be surprised, especially new believers or people who are not that strong in faith, whatever the case may be, you feel that you have to fix yourself first to answer the calling. But it doesn't really work like that with God and God <laughs> Sometimes God will call you in a place that you least expect it. So for example, some of y'all probably just still masturbating, still out, still watching porn, still sleeping around, still lying, still doing drugs, still partying, um, lazy, this, this, and that. You, you feel like you don't even have your life together and it's like, okay, I know God is calling me to something greater, but let me go and fix myself first and then, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I tell people this all the time, but you're not God. If you fixed yourself and then came to God, that will make it you God. You cannot do this by yourself. So I need you to understand that first and foremost, when God calls you something, if it doesn't scare you, it's probably not God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you know, the things that God calls us to is so much greater than ourselves, which is why I always say that the ceiling that we think of ourselves is God's floor. So if God has called you past that ceiling, <laughs> oh God, you know he's gonna take you through it, right? So I just wanted to encourage you that, don't feel that, oh, I need to fix myself, I need to do this, I need to do that, because God calls, Paul on the way to go and persecute more Christians. It doesn't make any sense. And even I would tell you about the story of David. A lot of people know about King David, right? But I think too many people, they only touch on two things in David's life. Well, three. They touch on him defeating Goliath, him being king over Israel, and him sleeping with Bathsheba. Like those are the three things that most people talk about. But most people don't really know that when King, when, when David was anointed as king, by Samuel. He, you know what he did right after Samuel anointed him as king? He went back to his father's flock because he was um, a shepherd basically and continued to shepherd the sheep. He basically went back to doing what he was doing and not even that, before he sat here and defeated Goliath, he had to defeat a lion, I will, I'm always gonna say lion, tigers and bear, but a lion and a bear first before he defeated Goliath. And even after he defeated Goliath, guys, he still was not just elevated to kinghood. He had to serve underneath Paul as a harp, harpist, he was doing, you know, whatever. He was basically a musician. He served underneath Paul and he served in the army before he actually was king. All right, so I'm saying all that to say, don't think that you will be king overnight, okay? God is not Cinderella. He's not a, oh, um, I'm just a little Cinderella girl. And then next day, yeah, yeah, queen. It doesn't work like that. You have to, uh, if, you, if, if God said you are going to be queen, it's not tomorrow, okay? You better go and take etiquette class. You better go and learn what a queen does. You better go and shadow queen, Seth. If you, if, if, let's say if you want to be a doctor, you don't wake up one day just because you think you did your bachelor's <laughs> in biology, that means you're a doctor. No, you still have to do med school and you still have to do residency, okay? You don't just go into that place. So maybe even God is calling you to a ministry. Maybe you say you're going to preach one day and this, this, and that, but you're looking at yourself like, but God, God, how could I, a wretch like me, how could I? But the thing is that God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Do you know why God took, took Saul out of position? Well, technically he was kind of overqualified. Everybody thought that he was qualified to be king because he was handsome, he was tall, he was this, he was that. He took a shepherd boy that was overlooked, okay? The youngest in the house of Jesse. That is who he used to be king of Israel. Hmm? So I'm just telling you that don't sit here and be like, oh God, how can I da da da? And, and hear me clearly, I'm not saying that 
you would just jump straight into the pulpit. <laughs> There's a lot of consecration purification that has to happen before that, you know. Um, but I'm just saying that let's say if God did did tell you something, like maybe he told you you're going to preach one day or you're going to have a ministry or you're going to um, um, be married one day and you're sitting here like, well, I've never seen it. I'm still a fornicator. I'm still with this. I'm still battling with this. Um, I have generational curses, blah, 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 blah. Oh, God doesn't want to hear that. You sound like Moses saying, I've stood out, I've stood out. I said, God is like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Listen, God's strength is a win. God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. Understand that. So even if you have a weakness and God is calling you and and, and you just feel like it, it can't be. You know, I just want you to have the, the faith right now that God, if God brought you to it, he will take you through it. Just trust him. So if God told something to you or he's calling you to something and he's calling you in the midst of your mess and you think that I, my life is just not where it needs to be. God is obviously not talking to me because I don't know. Some of you guys are struggling financially, struggling um, with your marriage and God is saying that he's going to bless it. Huh, man, hold tight to that. Have faith. Have faith that he will do what he says he's going to do, that he's not a man that he should lie. So God said it. I believe it. That's it. I don't care what my situation looks like right now. I'm not looking at the waves. I'm going to be like, Peter, look at Jesus and walk on that water. All right? All right. So that's my word of exhortation. I think I'm done. We done, Holy Spirit? Yeah. So <laughs> let me just quickly pray, close it out, and yeah. Oh, God, we're here again. Wow, we are here again, God. And we just thank you so much, Lord, because you're so faithful. Can we just, can we acknowledge how faithful you are, God, that, Lord, I, I just thank, thank you, God, that you're not a man that you should lie, God. Thank you so much that you never fall off your throne. Thank you so much that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You know our beginning and our end. You put a period to our life, God, before we were even born, God. So the greatness that you called us to be, God, it's only because you already saw it in the future, God. Oh, God. I thank you so much, God, because, Lord, some of us, we just have no idea. Like, we can't even fathom, God, what the, the, the standard you're calling us to, the greatness you're calling us to. I pray, God, increase someone's vision in the name of Jesus Christ, God. I pray, God, impart faith into those who are listening today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God. Any spirit of doubt, fear, confusion, worry, God, we rebuke it. We reject it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And I pray, God, Holy Spirit of truth, touch your people. I pray, God, let your peace that surpasses all understanding fall on the, uh, those who are watching this, God, because people have to realize that when you say something, God, let there be a peace that comes with it. Peace is not equated to comfortability. Some people think because they are uncomfortable, God, that it's not your will. Some people think because what you call them to or what you're telling them to do, since it makes them uncomfortable, it cannot be you, God. But Lord, I know you're not a, a God of comfort zone, God. You are a God that takes us out of our comfort zone to birth something new, God. And you want to birth something within us, God, because let's, let's be honest, God. Childbirth, labor, it, it's not a pretty process, God. But the end result, the blessing is beautiful, God. And I know, God... I know, God, the Lord, that you are for us, God. So if you are for us, who can be against us, God? And I pray, God, let someone, God, catch that revelation today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God. That, Lord, you do not start something that you can't finish. Hmm. You don't start something you can't finish, God. I pray, God, for anyone who's going through an intense purification process, God, that you are stripping things from them and they are confused. Why are friends dropping away from me? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Unbeknownst to them, God, it is all part of your divine plan, God. Some people confuse the enemy for everything, God, but sometimes, God, you are doing a work in them. You are pruning them, God pruning you are sanctifying them you are making them holy god so that you 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 can um uh, you're just refining them as it says in your word god remove the dross from the silver you are removing the dross the impurities out of their heart god so that they will be a, a, a better vessel to be used by you god Lord, I just thank you so much, God. I pray for everyone who's watching this. I cover them with the blood of Jesus, God. I cover all, all the plans, everything, their future, God. We place it in your hands, God. We commit our ways to you, God. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Woo! Wow!
yeah, this is gonna be a quick video. Oh my gosh. I always get so excited when I'm like, oh my gosh, I wasn't really talking for that long. But anyway, <laughs> so anyways, guys, tell me what you guys think about this video in the comment section. Let me know how you guys are feeling. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. 16K of you actually saw it fit to hit the subscribe button. That's why y'all listen to me. Y'all press click and y'all that is wild but I'm appreciative <laughs> I'm appreciative for each and every one of you and I I'm just so grateful I'm just so um I, I just I'm just so grateful that God can use me that I, I'm able to serve you because really that's what I am I'm a servant I'm, I'm serving you all when it comes to your hair when it comes to your faith um i appreciate every dm every email that you all send me um, every comment i read everything um thank you guys so much for the support and yeah good things are coming guys and i'll see all of you i'll see all of you guys later bye <laughs>